God bless you and welcome again to another Tuesday night edition of Bible Study. I'm Pastor Dickerson Wells, the pastor of Bethel Church of God in Christ. We're one church and we minister in two locations. I want to invite you to please join us for in-person worship at both locations. Service begins at 8 a.m. at our Mumford location, which is located at 25 North Tipton Street in the heart of downtown Mumford, Tennessee. And you can join us at 10 a.m. at our Memphis location. And that address is 2216 Whitney Avenue. And that's in the Fraser community of Memphis. If you're unable to join us at 8 and at 10, you can join us online at 9 a.m. Central uh, via Facebook, um, also YouTube, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, please connect uh, with us through the social media platforms that we have available and for those that are available to you. Uh, you can please uh, connect with us. Please like, please share, please comment. And uh, we'll be certainly grateful to hear from you and know that you are a part of the worship experience at Bethel. I'm also fortunate to pastor uh, the King of Glory Church which is located in Rossville, Tennessee, 440 War Road. For those of you who live in the Fayette County community or the surrounding area, I want to invite you to join us for both online and in-person worship at 11.45 a.m. each Sunday morning. And you too will be blessed by the worship experience at the King of Glory Church of God in Christ. I have a word that I want to share with you uh, on this evening, and um, uh, trust that you will be blessed by it. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness and for your grace. Another day that you've kept us, and we're so thankful and so grateful. I pray your blessings upon this time of teaching and learning. Open up our hearts and minds to be receptive to your word, and we'll be mighty thankful and mighty grateful. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Well, um, this morning when I got up, I, um, heard this word that I want to share with you. And the word simply said this, it said, fight the good fight, fight the good fight. And I went into my study, um, here at home and began to engage uh, the text, and um, um, I want to share with you what has been given to me on this on this evening. And so I believe, I believe with all of my heart that um, each of us have a calling on our life. Everybody's calling is different, but each of us. We have a calling on our life. And the Bible teaches that we were made for God's pleasure in Revelation 4 and 11. We were created for purpose. Um, we were created um, in the image of God, in the likeness of God. And Isaiah 43 and 7 says, that we were made for God's glory. And so because we were made for God's glory, because we were made with purpose and for purpose, uh, because we uh, were made for God's pleasure is the reason that I believe that we were created for purpose. So just lay your hands upon yourself and say, I was made for purpose. You have a reason. Uh, for being in existence. You have a reason that the Lord has allowed you to live and see a, another day. You have a reason for living with conditions that other people have died with. You have a reason, amen, that you are still alive and that you're still on the top side of the earth. And so... The enemy knows that we were created for purpose. He knows that we were created for a reason. He knows that we were created 
for God's pleasure and for God's glory. He knows that we were created and commissioned, catch this, as soldiers in God's army for the purpose <clears throat> to fight against evil and to fight against injustices of all kinds. That's why we were here. And so life, life is filled with difficulties. And the difficulties of life, they do to you what they do to me. They do to me what they do to you. They do to us what they do to others. And um, they are designed to discourage us the difficulties. They are designed not only to discourage us, but they are designed to distract us, catch this, from the calling that's on our life for the purpose for which we were created. They are um, designed to discourage us, to distract us from the calling and oftentimes, the enemy is quite successful in hindering us from fulfilling the purpose and the calling that's on our life. Because when things really get tough and really get tight, we do like other people. We're prone to quit. We're prone to stop. We're prone to say, I've had enough. We've, we are, we're prone to say, I wasn't made for this. We're prone to say, this is not for me. Um, we are, we are, we are, we are prone to just surrender our hands and say, forget it. But Paul says to Timothy, he says, look, I want you to continue to fight the good fight. I know there are difficulties that you are being met with, but I want you to continue to fight the good fight. I know you don't think you can do it, and in and of ourselves, we can't, but I'm going, but God is going to strengthen you, Timothy. He's going to cause you to be able to operate in a strength that is not your own. So because God is going to anoint you to operate in a strength that's not your own, I want you to continue to fight the good fight of faith. And when you get to the point of weakness that you cannot seem to operate, that's when the strength of God kicks in and motivates you and and gives you that extra push and drive um, to um, do more than what you believe that you are capable of doing. And so um, um, it is in 1 Timothy where we learn that Timothy was commissioned uh, to a difficult task. And who told us that our task was going to be easy? No one told us that ministry was easy. No one told you that um, what you're seeking to do and what you're seeking to accomplish was going to be uh, easy. Um, it's not easy. There are difficulties that we are met with. There are, there are challenges that we must face. And so uh, in 1 Timothy, we learn that uh, this young minister was commissioned to a difficult task. And Timothy, like most of us, we, he grew up in a religious home. It wasn't a perfect home, but it was a religious home. It wasn't a perfect home, but it was a home that acknowledged God. It wasn't a perfect home, but it was a home that believed in prayer. It wasn't a perfect home, but it was a home that not only believed in prayer, but, but believed in the power of God and the strength of God. 
It wasn't a perfect home, but it was a home that knew how to go to God in prayer. Amen. And oftentimes we look for God to operate in perfect situations, but the God I serve, he always takes situations and environments that are imperfect, amen, so that he can operate for his glory and bring forth something good. Is there, can any good come out of Nazareth? Uh, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And, and so it is through the imperfections of our surroundings. It is through the imperfections uh, in our lives that God somehow is able to birth uh, the work that he needs to do for his glory so that no one will be able to get the credit. No one will be able to get the glory but God. No one could have done this in the midst of this imperfection but God. And so um, he grew up in a religious home and Paul encouraged him, look, I want you to remain in Ephesus. I want you to remain in Ephesus. And Ephesus was not the most easy city for anyone to do ministry. And I don't know where the Lord has placed you. I don't know um, what calling is upon your life. But I want you to rest assured that just because the hand of God is upon your life, don't look for your situation to be perfect. Don't look for everything around you, amen, to operate smoothly. And um, uh, Ephesus was not a uh, easy place for this young minister to do ministry. And this new church that was led by Timothy, it was full of all kinds of obstacles. Amen. And what types of obstacles are before you? Amen. You can take a list and begin to write them down, I'm sure. What type of challenges are you facing? I'm sure you can make another list and write them down. Uh, what difficulties met you today? Uh, I'm sure you can list them. What challenges are before you tomorrow? I'm sure you can list them. And so uh, life is filled with all kinds of obstacles, uh, but we still have purpose. I want you to know that with purpose, with vision, with goals, with, um, with ministry, with life comes difficulties, comes challenges. Who told you that the road was going to be easy? I didn't. The Bible didn't. Uh, if anyone did, they they misled you. They misrepresented the truth. Nobody told you that the road was going to be easy. But I do not believe that the Lord has brought you this far to abandon you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Others will. Others might. Others might uh, not continue to support you. But I am your God and I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. So regardless of what your purpose, regardless of your goals, regardless of your ministry assignment, you can look for challenges. Um, regardless of your life's dreams that you're seeking to reach and you're seeking to accomplish, there will be difficulties, there will be challenges, but Paul says to us, fight the good fight. And so Paul, whose life and ministry was met with much difficulty, had many discouragements. You, re re you re remember the long list, litany of things that he said five times this, I've, I've been sick, I've, I've been out on a dangerous sea, the whole list, if you can recall. So Paul was very aware of the challenges and the difficulties that come up against us when we are called for a purpose, when we are uh, commissioned in the army of God. Um, and so Paul uh, says to Timothy, he said, look, 
I'm fully aware of the kinds of things that we are met with in our ministry assignments. But I want to commission you. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. I want to strengthen you with these words. I want to empower you with these words. I want to give you this motto uh, uh, for life. And that is fight the good fight. And there is a calling on our lives. That's why we have to fight the good fight. We fight the good fight because there is a calling on our lives. There are times when we feel or even tell ourselves, I can't do it. I can't continue. And there is a calling on your life. And I don't want you to miss the opportunity that God has given you. Amen. I don't want you to allow this harvest to pass you by because you have allowed the challenges and the difficulties of life to cause you to forfeit the assignment that God has given to you. And so there is a calling on your life and I want you to operate in your calling. Lay your hand upon yourself and say, I must operate in my calling. Amen. Operate in your calling in the ways Catch this, that are comfortable for you. Don't try to be like anybody else. When David went to visit his brothers at the direction of his father, he noticed that they were being bullied after he arrived to the battlefield. He noticed they were being bullied by this Goliath, a tall giant. And he noticed that all of the men in the army were scared and afraid to come out. And I want you to know that what's before you, it's, it's just a bully. It may be bigger than you. It may cause you to feel intimidated, but it's a bully. And so you re remember the story so well, how Saul put David on some armor. Look, since you have positioned yourself and given yourself to fight, let me give you something to fight with. And he put on this armor and he was unable to operate. And sometimes others clothe us in gear, clothe us in armor that we are not comfortable operating in. And ultimately, it hinders us from being effective um, in um, warfare. And it hinders us in being engaged in using those weapons that we are accustomed to. To using. And so David said, look, I can't operate in this if I'm going to be victorious. I got to revert back to what I'm used to. And I don't want you to abandon those weapons that you are accustomed to using. Prayer, fasting, studying God's word, applying God's word to your life. And David just went back and picked up that old good old slingshot and he operated in a calling that was comfortable for him. Operate in your calling. If you're going to be successful in fighting a good fight, you got to operate in your calling. And in this calling, uh, you have to continue to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to operate in faith. You got to operate in faith. And that is exactly what David did when he was, when he reverted back to the weapons that he was accustomed to using, he operated in faith and you cannot, I cannot accomplish and succeed on our own. Uh, Paul says, look, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. I can't do it by myself. I can't do it on my own but I can operate and be successful through Christ who strengthens me. And I want you to know that we are called to operate in faith. We are called to fight the good fight in faith. We are called not to, not to, not to surrender, but we are called to walk. We are called to live. We're called to operate by faith 
and not by sight. It's not in what you see, but it's in what you believe. Amen. It's it's not in what you have access to, but it's in who you believe that has all of the access. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He has everything. And so we look to God who is the author and the finish of our faith. We look to God, amen, who supplies our need. We look to God who supplies and is the source of all that we need. And so finally, Paul says to fight the good fight, not only must we operate in our calling, not only must we must operate in faith, but Paul says in order to fight the good fight of faith, we must have a good conscience. A good conscience. Meaning, what is that? Meaning it is an inner voice. It is an inner feeling viewed as acting as a guide to what is right and what is wrong. Amen. Sometimes we hear that little still small voice encouraging us to operate. Uh, not eye for eye, tooth for tooth, not that kind of operation, but we not that kind of conscience, but a conscience that is viewed as a guide of what is right and what is wrong. And I want you to know that just because everybody is doing it, don't make it right. Just because it's popular at the moment doesn't make it right. There is a way that seems right, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And so um, we have been, uh, as a, a matter of fact, Paul says on another occasion to one of the churches, I expect better from you. And so Christ always expects better from us. He wants us to operate in a sense of integrity. He wants us to have character. He wants us to operate in honesty. And how many people have you noticed, not only within the church, but those that have operated in various forms of government uh, or any other circle that have fallen due to not operating in good conscience, conscience, operating uh, in integrity, operating in honesty, and as a result of it, they fail. And so if you're going to fight the good fight of faith, if you're going to operate in your calling, if you're going to operate uh, and fulfill the purpose for which Christ created you, you must not only have a good conscience, a good sense of what is right and wrong and operate in what is right according to the Bible, not according to what you want to do. In all of our ways, we got to do what? Acknowledge Christ and he will do what? Direct our path. Look, that's all the time I have for uh, this evening. I trust that you've been blessed by the word of the Lord that has been shared on this evening. I want to encourage each of you to fight the good fight of faith. Don't abandon the calling. Don't abandon the purpose. Don't abandon your dreams and goals because life has thrown something at you that you have felt unfair, that life has thrown something at you that has caused you to be discouraged, that life has thrown something at you and you feel as if your dreams are no more. I want you to operate in your calling, operate in faith, and operate in a good conscience. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this time of sharing the word of God. And I pray, dear Lord, that that man, that woman, uh, that boy, that girl, whomever is watching this uh, service on this evening, this time of teaching and learning, they've been met with much difficulty in this season that has brought about discouragement, that has brought about distractions, but we rebuke the power and the forces of the devil that seek to kill, steal, and to destroy. 
you have come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And so we speak to that inner man and we encourage that inner man today to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Remain faithful to the calling. Remain faithful to you. Remain faithful, O oh God, in all that they seek to do for your glory and for your pleasure. And this we pray and ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. Amen and amen. That's all the time I have. I pray that you will uh, prepare to join us um, in giving. I trust that you will um, use whatever method is best for you at this time. And may the Lord bless you real good for your gift that you are sharing. Well, my brother, my sister, I want again, uh, want to invite you to be our very special guest this coming Sunday at Bethel Church of God in Christ. We're located in two locations. Our Memphis campus is located at 2216 Whitney Avenue in the Fraser community of Memphis. Our Mumford campus is located at 25 North Tipton Street in the heart of downtown Mumford, Tennessee. If you're unable to join us for in-person worship at 8 and at 10, join us online at 9 a.m. And then on this coming Sunday at King of Glory Church, uh, 440 War Road in Rossville, Tennessee, Please join us at 11.45 a.m. and be blessed by the word of the Lord. May the Lord bless you richly is my prayer.